JFT, just fair and direct. Okay, hello and good morning everyone. Welcome to JFT Traders Espresso with me, that is on Charles Gus. Today is the 4th of August 2021, so yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this um, Wednesday's morning session where we're going to have a very quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. But before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, I'll give you a few seconds to read the rest and we can continue. Okay, so now then, um, also just before we jump in into the charts, as always, quick mentioning of our GFD YouTube channel, to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos, and of course our GFD Bank website, and specifically our GFD research page, which we also update on a daily basis. So yep, check us out here on jfdbank.com, and click on the research tab right there on the top. So, now then. Let's have a look at what's happening here with the markets. The first one I want to pick up here is Nikkei. Um, again, not much is happening, to be honest here, but um, still kind of um, moving a little bit sideways, you would say, um, and remains above the 200-day EMA. So that's kind of a, a slight positive here for the uh, for the bulls. Um, but, um, of course, with the fact that we are near this key support zone, that's not, of course, uh, kind of bring a lot of confidence here. So basically, in other words, we're kind of stuck here. We need a confirmation. Um, we need a confirmation kind of break through one of our levels here. So for the downside, what I need here to see is a nice, good, strong move below this uh, 27,385 territory again. Um, and then, yes, we could maybe go for those slightly lower levels. For the upside, I uh, would prefer to see a push above the uh, maybe somewhere around the 28,034th, uh, sorry, 36, 37 territory here, um, just because at the same time we would already be placed uh, above the 21 day EMA as well, and potentially more buyers could join in. So, yep. Like I said, that's the little game plan here, it's still uh, on Nikkei, the same one. Um, so let's see which way this is going to break out. But at the moment, guys, on one hand, of course, you could say that we are trading below some of these downside lines. Uh, like, for example, here, I mean, it's a, it's a short term tentative downside line. We could also draw something like this as well. Let me just put this one on chart. There we go. Um, but either way, I mean, we still, uh, if, you, if you are kind of a little bit more bearish on this one, then still a confirmation break for you is needed. And uh, as I said, for me, that could come here on, an, on around this area. Uh, near the lowest point of May. Um, I can see in the chat room here, good morning Erica to you too. I hope you're having a wonderful start of the day. I hope everybody who's joining in having a wonderful start of Wednesday guys. So yep, um, feel free to ask if, if, if you have any questions around around the markets or from the technical side. So yep, I'm always happy to, to help you out on this. But um, yeah, coming back to the um, um, indices, uh, Shanghai Composite, there we go, so pushed nicely to the upside, remained above the 200-day EMA, um, and managed to push above this uh, uh, 3,470 territory, the one that I talked about yesterday, uh, because what I said yesterday, that if by any chance this upside support line, which we have been testing from underneath, continues to provide resistance, uh, then, yep, another slide could be possible, but if we overcome that one and we break above of the 33,470 territory. Now that's where it could become a little bit more interesting for a few more buyers. So for now, uh, the day is not finished. The trading day is not finished on on, in the, uh, on the Shanghai Composite. So uh, that's why let's um, 
Uh, let's wait and see where this daily candle is going to end. Um, if it stays above this area, then, well, we could get a little bit more excited with the upside. Uh, the, the German index, DAX, so, I mean, uh, the same game plan stays valid still. I mean, uh, I talked about this yesterday that uh, currently the index is stuck in this little range, um, roughly between the 15,456 and the 15,681. So approximately around there guys um, and uh, yeah for now I mean before we could consider the next kind of short term at least short term directional move a break of the of that um, of one of those areas one of those hurdles is needed um, but if let's say if it breaks through the lower side of it then still there is a chance for the bulls to step in near this upside support line taken from the low of the uh, 19th of March of 2020 so keep that in mind guys um, for the upside it's a pretty straightforward uh, game plan here we need that confirmation break above that 15,600 and uh, 81 territory at least above that in order to go for some higher levels uh, currently the cash index is above uh, yesterday's um, is above yesterday yesterday's um, close so we are we are already back above uh, the 15,600 mark but we're still below this hurdle so let's keep an eye on that one uh, IBEX 35 guys so the Spanish index and uh, yeah continues to uh, receive a hold up uh, near that 8822 territory I spoke about that level uh, recently so in order to uh, go for the upside well again uh, daily candle would uh, mm, basically here uh, we have um, uh, just a second bear with me one moment i can see there's a comment in the uh in the yeah in the chat uh, i will get uh mr mahez i will get to you in a while just bear with me one moment but um yep i'll pick up on that one and uh, AUD cad um so yep uh, basically um here the situation is very kind of difficult i mean i would say again the same basically i would probably i would say the same as on the german index i mean we're seeing a bit of sideways activity right now um and we're struggling with this barrier the 8822 territory so once we clear that we there is a possibility a greater possibility to move um to move a little bit higher here so yep um for now let's see how this is going to play out but um Again, for the downside here, I mean, what I need to see is a drop at least somewhere below this 8,665 territory. The same kind of uh, view as I had yesterday, so let's see how that's going to play out. Uh, the S&P 500, guys, I mean, pushed uh, nicely to the upside. And, uh, yep, um, uh, we came very close to creating a new all-time high. And just to kind of let you know that uh, the uh, current all-time high sits uh, roughly around here. Let me just zoom in here a little bit. And, uh, yeah, so the current all-time high is uh, currently near the 4,430 territory, approximately around there. Um, we, like I said, we came very close yesterday, but uh, we didn't really overcome it. Um, looking at the cash index, we'll see that the price is currently sitting at around 4,421 zone, so we're not far from uh, that barrier. And if you want to aim for the upside, guys, well, wait for that confirmation break above the current all-time high, because at the moment it could be a tricky one, could be a different, uh, difficult one here. So it might also start moving sideways, because at the moment that's where we're seeing here roughly. Uh, we can see that on the downside, the 4,370 territory continues to provide uh, support. And so let's see if this uh, this barrier here also does the job and also provides resistance. So and then basically what we could have here is um, is a bit of a range. So, uh, but if we um, if we clear this barrier here, the 4,430 territory, uh, yes, um, yes, we could we could go a little bit higher here, and uh, the index would be placed into the uncharted territory. Uh, quick update on DXY and uh, yep, uh, looking at this picture, we are seeing a possible bullish flag here. So uh, we have our little poll uh, 
we have this little consolidation here but again let's see if that's going to work out or not because at the moment yes it is kind of forming something like that we still remain above the uh, 200 day EMA so in a way we could see a nice push higher and we could see maybe a test of this downside line and this is where we will uh, stall for a little bit because um, basically here we have a very important area we have the 21 day EMA as well we have this uh, this uh, one of the uh, hurdles here near the 92.32 territory so, and of course this downside line but if all that uh, if all that provides resistance another slide could be possible so keep that in mind guys uh, for now uh, long story short yes this is looking a little bit on the positive side here um, however however guys let's um, not rush into anything let's if we climb above the uh, let's put it this way for today if we climb somewhere above this current high of today near the 92.10 zone then yes I will aim for a bit of an up move here towards this downside line uh, now jumping into WTI oil guys so um, declined heavily yesterday as well and uh, it continued to decline and this is what I said to you um, yesterday as well that uh, when we were still hanging somewhere around here I said in order to go for the downside we need that confirmation break below this this support area between the 70.43 and the 70.79 uh, so we got that and now to be honest I mean all this is looking a little bit more uh, on the bearish side so if uh, the uh, this area the which is which we previously looked at as a support if it holds and if it now becomes as a good area of resistance then yes uh, my next target could be this um, upside support line taken from the low of the 5th of April so let's see how that's gonna play out for the upside what I need to see here is I need to see a nice good push maybe back above the 21 day EMA in order to um, get a little bit more uh, int interested in in the upside scenario however there are a few obstacles um, on the way higher here but I'll pick up on those if we uh, climb back above the 21 day EMA a uh, quick update on silver silver is looking quite interesting yesterday if you remember yesterday guys in my video in my morning video I said to you that uh, here what I'm looking at here is a possible um, bullish flag here um, so we and also well, I'm keeping an eye on this downside resistance line taking from the high of the 11th of June so um, if that if the upper side of the of uh, the um, of the of the bear of the bullish flag here gets violated together with this downside line which kind of in a way almost coincide here um, then there is a good chance we could see a nice good push further north guys so for now I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside on this one and um, but my next target mm, my next target will be uh, let me just put this one on the chart here very quickly uh, somewhere around here near this downside line or we might overshoot that downside line this one is taken from the high of the 6th of July and we might overshoot that and test the 100 day EMA because so far you can see that this 100 day EMA kind of does the job and it does act as a good area of resistance so <clears throat> let's uh, let's see how that's gonna play out but for now like I said I'm leaning a little bit more towards the upside um, quickly on ripple not gonna spend too much time on this one because it continues to trade a kind of uh, sideways here I mean uh, we did overcome this 0 0.7339 territory so what we did here we managed to test an area uh, near the 100 day EMA near this 0 0.77 uh, 72 ter zone so uh, what's gonna happen here basically right now it, or should say what could happen here um, is of course we could see a continuation move um, higher but for that we need a confirmation break above the 0 0.7772 territory right here at the same time we could climb above this uh, 100 day EMA and then we'll take it from there so uh, long story short guys for now um, like I said if you want to aim for the upside probably the 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 safer option is to wait for a push above uh, the current highest point of August near the 0 0.7772 and then yes uh, we could target this downside resistance line taken from the high of the 14th of April so in other words if this downside line continues to provide resistance then 
this whole move higher could still be seen, uh, could still be classed as a temporary correction before another possible leg of selling. Now jumping into a few pairs. Now this is where uh, the interesting bit comes in. So let me just quickly uh, capture the AUD CAD as well here as a request. There was a request. So bear with me uh, one moment here. So okay. So first of all, AUD USD um, pushed slightly to the upside here, managed to stay above this downside line. I talked about this yesterday if you're in my morning video and uh, yep, it did uh, get a bit of support here from the mm, from the RBA here, but um, uh, still not much. I mean, still for now, you can see that uh, this hurdle here, the 0 0.74 10 zone is doing its job. It is providing good resistance. Um, we do have this uh, 21 day EMA as well. Uh, providing resistance so in a way if you want to aim for the upside wait for that confirmation break above this barrier um, at the moment I mean looking at this picture yes it is looking a little bit more on the positive side but again um, also a lot will depend on the on the equity markets how those perform if suddenly mm, equities turn south and well I mean uh, we could see a, a D drifting lower as well um, so, uh, but coming into AUD CAD here, now this is where the interesting bit as well came in. So, um, basically, uh, the um, Australian dollar against Canadian dollar, it's more uh, here the, the weakness came in from the uh, Canadian dollar, of course, because uh, because oil markets yesterday declined heavily and we saw a huge uh, drop in, in WTI oil in Brent and uh, uh, basically that kind of had its negative effect on the Canadian dollar as well. So um, the Canadian dollar, of course, as we know, and is heavily tied up to uh, to the oil market because Canada's main export is oil. Um, so basically here we have this situation where we saw the Canadian dollar uh, decline in devaluating against uh, some of its major counterparts and inclusive inc including of course um, AUD and uh, uh, the po also slight positivity in the and the equity world uh, did also kind of uh, bring, bring this lift this um, risk related uh, commodity related currency AUD and the risk related currency yep uh, AUD so um, it did push uh, f a little bit higher here so uh, basically that's the kind of little um, reaction that we had yesterday here on this pair uh, in in relation to all the um, all the events that were happening so of course the RBA came, came in here uh, with some positivity and uh, we saw the uh, oil markets drifting lower which in, in case affected uh, Canadian dollar neg in a negative way and uh, yeah so the and the equities in general were on the positive note as well so um, but coming into USD CAD as well so you can see yesterday yes USD CAD also pushed a little bit to the upside so certainly the um, the weaker <coughs> um, weaker Canadian dollar here um, poured in and uh, yep we saw this pair pushing north although although DXY didn't really let's say move much so um, coming back to USD CAD here you can see that yes this basically uh, this move here was kind of mainly driven by oil so uh, so yeah uh, we moved, pushed higher on this pair we tested this upside support line from underneath uh, this one's taken from the low the 9th of June and uh, yep uh, we are seeing currently a hold up here we're still below the 208 EMA so um, <laughs> uh, Mr. Mahez yes you're welcome uh, you're welcome yes I hope that helps um, yeah so basically here um, we can see that so far what we will do I mean what we're seeing so far is it just a hold up um, um, slightly below this upside line so what we will do is of course we'll wait for some breaks here of some of the levels um, and uh, one of the levels will be this one right here here um, so for the upside I would like to see maybe a push somewhere above this 1.2605 territory at the same time we would be placed uh, above back above the 200 day EMA in other words above all of these um, 
all of the EMAs and potentially more buyers could join in on this one. Uh, but for the downside, now this is where I'm going to take a bit of a careful approach and uh, yep, I'm going to probably wait for a break of this upside support line, tentative of course, but nevertheless an upside support line taken from the low of the 1st of June and also at the same time a drop below this 1.2423 territory could do the trick, or actually it's a more of a beautiful number here, 1.2424, a nice drop below that, yep, could, uh, would confirm a forthcoming lower low and uh, could attract more sellers. Now jumping into US dollar against the Russian ruble and uh, here uh, I can see that the I've talked about this pair yesterday if you remember and I said to keep an eye on some of the on one of these uh, lines here uh, the one of these uh, short term trend lines we are once again violating the uh, the upside support line however I would say to stay cautious here because again we kept on violating recently these um, uh, this this upside line but the the daily candle was still not able to um, stay below it so so what uh, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna just play the waiting game at the moment because again it's very tempting uh, yes to to go lower here uh, but um, again let's see how DXY is gonna play out if it suddenly pops higher then well I mean we could see maybe this um, this pair uh, this pair moving north and especially if uh, oil starts. Can, or should I say not start but continues to decline um, then yes uh, we could see maybe this pair as well pushing north because again let's not forget that uh, the Russian ruble is also one of those that react uh, uh, has a direct correlation with the um, with the oil price so I mean if, uh, if oil starts declining then certainly it has its a slight negative effect on the Russian ruble um, now US dollar against the Turkish lira. Now this is where an interesting bit came in. Yesterday we uh, talked about this pair, and uh, yep, what I said that uh, keep your eyes on this 100-day EMA, which as you can see uh, did its job and acted as a good support area at one point in time yesterday. Um, but again, it then broke. Uh, we saw the uh, Turkish CPIs coming out. Those. Um, hit a record high I think let me just quickly double check I think that was the quite a no sorry not the record high but um, I think that was a record high in uh, well since um, since to since November 2018 guys so um, so yeah that the year-on-year -year figure uh, came out at 18.95 percent so yep that didn't really work well with the uh, Turkish lira. Um, initially, we saw the Turkish lira strengthening. Uh, you saw here we saw that decline. And by the way, uh, one of my targets uh, was here, the 8.2645. I spoke about that level. That was the that's the lowest point of June, and I said that I'm going to aim for this area. Which, to be honest, I'll take that. We managed to kind of reach it, so uh, just fell shy by a few points, of course, but. That's it. That's fine, guys. I mean, um, so we managed to reach the area here, and then yes, of course, the uh, the market started reevaluating the whole CPI situation with uh, with Turkey, and uh, yep, uh, we saw the Turkish lira devaluating here a little bit. So, uh, so yeah, let's uh, let's see how today's game uh, game uh, how today's day is gonna look. But um, if it stays above this 100 day EMA, maybe we could see a bit of a, another another push here to the upside. Um, quick update on GBPUSD. So um, here uh, we have a pound, which is kind of uh, doing a good job. And and GBPUSD here, as you can see, rebounded from this downside line. I talked about this, guys, and uh, I said yesterday that <coughs> if as uh, this uh, downside line continues somehow to provide support, then yes, you can see we could see a nice push back up, especially if it also pushes above the 1.3910 territory. Now, um, the only concern here for me. Is is the uh, DXY if by any chance DXY does make a move north uh, slight push north then we could see 
this pair drifting back down, maybe even testing this upside support line taken from the low of the 18th of May of 2020. And then we will take it from there, guys. But at the moment, at this point in time, um, at this point in time, we are a little bit leaning more towards the upside on this one. My next target is I'm still aiming for that 1.40 territory, the psychological 1.40 territory. So let's see, yeah, how that's gonna play out, guys. Um, I can see in chat room here, Rodrigo Diaz, good morning to you too. So I hope you're having a wonderful day, the start of the morning as well. Um, unless you're somewhere else, I mean, so, <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, and maybe you're already, your day has already, is closer to, to the end, but again, um, so yeah, guys, um, GBP Aussie here, jumping into that one very quickly. So we're seeing a bit of a corrective move lower here. Um, if you remember a while ago, I talked about this pair and I said that we may see a bit of a corrective move here lower. Um, where I'm gonna aim for this 1.8762 territory uh, right here. Um, that's the, let me just quickly refresh my memory. That's the high of the, um, this one right here, the high of the 20th of May of 2020. Um, so yeah, we are currently getting a hold up here. Uh, you can see yesterday the, uh, the pair did find support near this area and, uh, yep, uh, we managed to kind of stall above it. So for now, I would say that if this area continues to provide support, then yes, <coughs> another up move here might be possible. So let's keep that in mind. Uh, we do have another tentative upside support line right here. We can draw it this way and uh, it's again, it's a tentative one, but um, let's see if it plays out. Uh, for now, I'm gonna keep an eye on this area. If it all provides good support, then yes, another push higher could be possible. If we break this and we fall below the 21 day EMA, I will consider a bit of a larger correction to the downside guys towards this upside support line taken from the low of the 10th of may and finally your usd quick update on this one not gonna spend too much time on it but um basically um for now uh for now i'm um, keeping an eye on this i mean um, there is still a hope that this could push north but again depending on how everything is going to play out today i'm gonna uh, be very careful for now, I would say, and uh, if it stays above the 21 day EMA, then the, yes, there is a possibility to uh, to see a move higher, but if it starts dropping below this uh, area, below this 21 day EMA and falls then below the 1.1830 territory, then well, maybe uh, it's not all that good in the pull block and we could see maybe uh, a bit of a slide here. So for now, long story short, if you're looking for the upside uh, on this one, probably wait for a push above uh, last week's high near the 1.1909 and then we, will, we might aim for this downside resistance line. Um, and then of course we'll take it from there guys. But for now that's the kind of little difficult situation here on euro dollar so guys that's it for the session i hope you found it useful and thank you very much for your views your likes your comments guys i really do so appreciate your activity here um thank you very much for that um hope you found it useful and if you want to catch me tomorrow morning as always at my traders espresso that's six o'clock gmt time for now have a wonderful trading day stay safe have your stop loss in place and everything will be fine so thank you very much and bye, -bye.